and, and Joe, maybe this is probably more appropriate for you. Sorry to put you on the spot. Do you know the status of the Hotel Convention Center? Yes, they're working towards uh, finalization of obtaining grading permits as we speak. Are they still in, is any part of their plan still in plan check then? The architectural plans are in plan check, but the grading plan um, is ready to be issued for grading permit. Okay. And I, I assume that they've expressed a willingness that once they're issued that grading permit to begin grading? Yes, and they, they've actually had um, some delays on their end in just trying to get ready to mobilize. So okay. we've been ready to issue the permit for some time, and they've been working towards obtaining a contractor to make it happen. Okay. <clears throat> um, can't, seeing we're all talking about crosswalks and the like, uh, Camero High School, um, I tend to receive, I've received a few complaints. I personally have several complaints about that crosswalk, although it's not used heavily at night. I know in, in the evening it's almost impossible to see someone walking across that. Um, they had, I think they must have had back to school night the other night. And uh, you could see some of the traffic come to a, I mean, I was right in front of a car, come to a screeching halt. The car on the, I was going, uh, what, towards, towards Mission Oaks on Mission Oaks Boulevard. And one car had stopped and some people were about to step out into the crosswalk and the car in front of me just slammed on their brakes. Um, because at the very last moment they saw the people coming and they, they couldn't see the individuals behind the other car. But I mean, it seemed like everyone was kind of, it was kind of a sudden stop. Um, I know I've seen kids go across that later at night when I'm returning at, uh, home from work late at, late at night, um, people walking their dogs. Uh, I'm wondering if there's a way to uh, better the lighting or if there can be any discussions with uh, Oxnard Union High School District as to seeing if there's any, any solutions they have or if there's really a legitimate problem, if they have one with their, with their students. I know they have crossing guards there and they, they have two. They do an excellent job because um, I'm more concerned about the evening hours and whether or not there's um, an easier solution to maybe addressing some of the lighting and or visibility issues. Right, what I would suggest is that we, you know, Take a look at. It. I know this has been a topic of discussion in the past, and um, and we can uh, revisit discussions with the school and and you know get a feel for what they're feeling is the if the concerns, and and what if anything may be able to be implemented to improve the situation. So okay. we can take a look at that. All right, and then it's a slight deviation off that topic, but it's still related to Camarillo High School. Um, I received a call from an individual who lives in the neighborhood adjacent to Cam High, right across the street, Mission Oaks Boulevard, um, <clears throat> saying that. I guess it's my understanding I'm not familiar with the neighborhood and or the parking situation other than I, I've driven down and I've seen a lot of cars there in the afternoon while school's in session. Uh, it's my understanding from what I'm told that there are parking permits issued to a lot of the residents that live there. They're, they're issued a certain number per household and they're to be distributed to individuals in that household. And then from what I'm being told is hey, somehow those are being distributed to students in the school so the students of the school are have they have their their permit displayed. They don't actually live at any of those residences in which the permits have been issued, but they're displaying them on their windshield and they're, for all intents and purposes, I guess legally, parking in 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 that neighborhood. <clears throat> but there's been some some issues in that. Um, they brought up the issue of trash day. There's there's simply no place to put my trash cans on trash day. Um, I leave them in my. I have to wheel them out further into the street, or I leave them smack dab in the middle of my driveway. Um, and there's just egress, ingress, you know, issues getting out of one's driveway sometimes, cars poking out. Um, and I'm wondering if there's something the city can do to address that situation. So yes, yeah, so you're correct in that area. There's restricted parking uh, hours. And then to be able to park there, a permit is issued to the police department with an application process and uh, issuance of that. As far as the number of permits that are issued and, and to who they are by name, and then the follow-up for, um, you know, it, it's for more uh, self-governed usage of that. So um, I mean, we can follow up with the police department and uh, take a look and see if there is a, a way to, you know, uh, verify who's using them and who's not, mm -hmm. uh, a, a check and balance on that situation. Um, so, uh, we can follow up on that also. I, I assume I haven't, I haven't I personally seen the permits. I assume they have individual or unique uh, serial IDs or something like that, or are they just blank? 
Yeah, I'm I, I don't know what they look like. Actually, I'm not real. Uh, off the top of my head, I, I can't recall. So I'm I'll, sure. Um, I'll, I'll follow up with staff okay. then yeah. afterwards. Can, okay. Can I follow up, Sean, just a yeah. second on that? My understanding, maybe I didn't hear right, but are the schools issuing some of the parking? No, no. Okay. no that, those are issued by the, through the police department to the residents that are in the area that qualify uh, for a permit in the uh, areas that have restricted parking hours. Okay, I just want to get that straight. Yeah, I, I thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, Sean, I, I, I received a call from that same from another individual and uh, on that very same issue, and I, I didn't know whether or not the, the uh, I, I support what Mr. Mulshay is saying, and I, I just didn't know if those permits were individually numbered or whether or not they were more that's what he asked. generic in nature. Yeah, that's so, what I don't know. Um, and so I would really appreciate that, uh, the follow-up by staff as well. Sure. And to clarify, your, your question, Kevin, <laughs> from what I'm told, is they are being issue, issued by the police department to those individual households, but then they are taking them and for whatever reason, distributing them to the kids, whether they are selling them or whether they're giving it to friends and family who happens to have kids going there. It's, okay. yeah, I don't know the exact situation of how they're getting out, but the, the, the point being made is that there are a large number of kids. I know parking on, on camp on, at Cam High, I attended there. When I went there, not all the kids had cars. And now every, it seems that like most kids seem to have cars. And the parking has only become worse and worse and worse over the, over the years. Um, and the parking hasn't, the parking allotment on campus has not really changed significantly to accommodate that increase. And so the, the, the adjacent neighborhood has been inundated. <clears throat> but yeah, how we, how we can, there's, there's, there's clearly, from what I'm being told, um, a, mis a misuse of, of the system um, to the detriment of the, a lot of the residents there. And so how we can go about trying to mitigate that or resolve that. Um, I don't necessarily have a solution off the top of my head, but I, I, I absolutely want to kind of dive into it and, and look into work with city staff and with the police department to see how we can how we can do that. Yeah, so we'll, we'll initiate uh, taking a look at that and work with the police department and, okay. uh, and come back to council with some information on that. Awesome. I appreciate it. And then uh, the last thing, and Dave, I'm going to put you on the, on the quick spot because um, I'm getting a lot of questions for an agenda item that we're going to hear later this evening. But people, a lot of people are asking, how do agenda items come to be on the agenda? And it's my understanding there are two routes to that. But can you explain as to how items come before the council on the agenda or on in our agenda? <laughs> you got it right back here in the policy. Yes, we have a council policy on that. That is council policy 1.04. The policy states, the city manager is responsible for scheduling agenda items for consideration by the city council, except for requests made in accordance with policy 7.01, general plan amendments, non-city initiated. A council member request, a council member request that an item be placed on a city council meeting agenda must be agreed upon by at least one other city council member at a city council meeting. An agenda item, an item that is within the city's subject matter jurisdiction will be scheduled by the city manager on the appropriate agenda. And staff will provide an agenda report and relevant backup material. An, agenda, an item that is not within the city subject manager jurisdiction will be brought to city council by the city manager for consideration to schedule the matter for a future city council meeting. The requesting council members will provide backup materials. Secondly, a member of the public may request to have an item that is within the city's subject matter jurisdiction be placed on the agenda. The item must be submitted in writing with relevant backup material to the city manager for transmittal to the city council for their information. Upon the request of at least two city council members at a city council meeting, the city manager will place the requested item on the appropriate agenda and staff will provide an agenda report with relevant backup material. The city manager will advise the requesting party in a timely manner as to the disposition of the request. So simply put, for those who, for those who thought maybe that was too long, <laughs> too much, there are two routes to agenda items. One is through staff, as 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 the city operates, things need to come before the city council to be voted on, to be enacted, and or action taken. That is one route, and yes. there's clearly uh, uh, um, discretion 
on behalf of the, well, you know, the, the city staff and ultimately the city manager as to what needs to come before the council. I mean, there's, there are definitely things that have to come before the council, but on some items, you know, whether things get pushed forward, certain issues or concerns, staff can address that. And if the need is, is, is felt like the need needs, needs to come before us, then they do that. Conversely, for people who uh, feel like they're not being listened to and or have no other avenue to get something on the council for, or on the agenda to be heard and discussed and or action taken upon, they can come to any one of us and say, this is a concern of mine, I think it's relevant, I think it's pertinent, and I would like you to be an advocate for me to get it on the council agenda. Any one of us can propose it, a second one of us says I agree, and that it gets placed onto a future agenda. At so, a council meeting. At a council meeting, yes, I'm sorry. And, and it must be within the subject matter jurisdiction, jurisdiction of the city council. Right, okay, and that's, that's very important. Very important. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, people had asked me to please explain that to, to the public. Um, I've explained it on a few numerous occasions, both publicly and privately, and I think I was just, it was nice to touch on here as well. So thank you, thank you for thank that. Thank you.